Greetings, Petroheads. Welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Now, Cone Dodger is running a fan build competition with um, where he wants us to build a car that competes with his 1967 Intrigue Rally. It's a small sports coupe, basically a small um, purpose built coupe based on a sedan now the problem is we didn't have a small sedan in our lineup in 1967 so what i created is this leave the whole part with um, based on an existing sedan and you end up with the amw magpie um first of all this is a smaller body shell than the than the intrigue and that will show a little bit later um, the, uh, the chassis is a steel monocoque with longitudinal replacement double wishbones are around because again there's no we're not joking around when it comes to performance on this kind of car and just look at it I, I know it um, it's it may look a little bit futuristic for 1967 I admit it is especially the part especially the rear part is is pretty pretty inspired by the Mercedes 190 Evo which came about 25 years later I realized that um, but still I mean can you really blame me it's a fantastic car that Mercedes so um, the panels are fiberglass which which is also what he used on the Intrigue if I'm not mistaken on the Intrigue Rally um, of course fiberglass is kind of expensive and not the best for safety and prestige but we don't care engine wise this is totally different from the Intrigue which has a 3.2 liter I think V8 this is a 2.6 liter inline four engine. We're sticking with the four valve per cylinder setup that we have used in the campaign before. We got forged internals all around. A very bore heavy, um, you know, bore and stroke ratio. Very, very heavy towards the bore. 98.3 to 85.6. And then we have a cam profile of 42, a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1, which for 60, which for 1967 is like very high, very, very high indeed. Um, but we're keeping the cam profile relatively low so we can have an evenly spread, uh, we can evenly spread out the torque um, because engines generally in this era don't rev very high. And we gotta make use of what what kind of rev band we have. Therefore, uh, a medium cam profile I think is best. It is naturally aspirated. There's no turbos yet. Four barrel carburetor, single carburetor, performance intake, and super leaded fuel because we don't give a damn about you know fuel costs. And pretty rich fuel mixture. This is probably as rich as it gets, right? We'll get one point higher, but still. Ignition timing is 58. I was tweaking this and the cam profile in conjunction with each other so that I could get a reasonably flat torque curve for the mid-range. RPM limit is 5600 RPM, which is enough, as you'll see. Long tubular headers, no cat, no mufflers. Loudness is 82.3, <laughs> which I don't know if there were any noise regulations in the, in the late 60s. There probably were. But you see, it's still not that loud. And also, like, what do you expect on a purpose-built car? Do you expect it to be as, as quiet as, as a Rolls-Royce or something? As a Rolls-Royce is today, I should say. Um, no, you don't expect that at all. So as far as the gearbox goes, we have a four-speed manual. Um, 
it is geared to, to 211 kilometers per hour second gear reaches to uh, 100 um 10 inch rims you gotta love the 10 inch rims uh that is because otherwise we wouldn't have been like otherwise i wouldn't have been able to fit any reasonably sized uh, tires for this kind of power even this way i can only go to 175s and you know that's maybe not where you want to be but it's it's where we're at so that is the downside to this body shell 500 millimeters of overall wheel diameter is also kind of funny we got solid discs up front drum brakes in the rear we have quite a lot of brake fade but we can't do anything about that because our maximum size is limited as far as aero goes we have no under tray we have 10 wing angle on the rear and 50 up front that is because if i had left it at 50 excuse me um we would have front lift and since we're going for good track times we don't want to lift on the front because having that down force on the front will allow us to turn a little bit harder a little bit quicker cooling airflow is a little bit more than it needs to be keeping this thing nice and reliable 62.4 is not bad at all then interior well there's not really much to say about the interior basic and basic four seats though four seats if we do remove this if we do remove the rear seats we would be even lighter than we already are standard 60 safety because no safety would be that would be that would make this car hard to believe how to put into production but as is, I mean, it's definitely not the safest car, but it has at least what is considered normal in a car. Standard springs for better spoilers, twin tip tempers, passive sway bars, and a customly tuned suspension, tuned more towards spoilers than drivability. And we get 30.4 drivability, which is significantly like eight points or so higher than the Intrigue Rally. Spoilerness is down a little bit by one or two points. Um, but the big biggest difference here is the weight. While the the Intrigue Rally weighs 2,200 and a little bit pounds, I can't remember the exact uh, figures, and also I don't know what that translates to in kilograms roughly around 1000 kilograms and you can see that we're uh, we're more than 200 kilograms lighter we're actually more than 500 pounds lighter um because this car weighs less than uh the 1700 pounds um costs it is cheaper than the than the entry rally it fits into track premium track and track budget which is kind of funny to fit in that these three are the best categories for it like I, I i don't think i've ever had a car that's both very good in track premium and also good in track budget because like the the price range between the two the, the price gap between the, these two categories is usually quite significant so it's kind of interesting why it also fits into the track budget uh, category. As far as the design goes, you can really see that this car is tiny. Three meters and 68 centimeters of length. That's, that's less than a Mark III Polo, I think. That is, or at least it's definitely for sure less than my Mark III Golf, which is about four meters long, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, <laughs> like that is the kind of that's where we're at with this car. This is just purpose built, and I'm intentionally not going to the test track because these numbers are f for you guys as a point of orientation. I will not go to the test track because 
you know these these numbers are a good point for orientation as i said but they but they only tell half the story really when it comes to on-track performance and uh i i don't want you guys to I, like i want you guys to compete in in this in this uh, fan build competition if you're interested but i don't want you to just sit in front of your computer and then tweak your car until you beat me like that is probably not the the purpose of this fan build competition you you can go ahead and um and tweak your car until you beat count archer he has a 135.95 effort track time and you know if if you want to go for max performance go ahead and do it so that is the video for uh, for today hope you guys like this car leave him some feedback on it do you want should we put this into production in like 1970 or should we build a mark ii version of it in 1971 or something leave me suggest uh, suggestions below hope you enjoyed leave a like or a comment thank you for watching I will see you next time.